what we're doing with the restaurant and with our businesses yeah. and as a community we're really just trying to make this a better place for the next generation yeah. but yeah we uh do the bread fresh uh daily what i love about japan is there's a lot of opportunities to follow your dreams mm, indeed so i do uh shobodan i'm part of the uh volunteer fire uh, ah, reserves out here nice like they have made it very clear some people do not want me I've been told to go back to my own country. I'm going to a spot called the Arrowhead Tavern owned by Derek. I believe this is called Lake uh, Najiri, right? So I'm heading down that side and we're gonna feature a spot, right? And there's a rumor going around that his spot has the best burgers in all of Japan. So I'm gonna go there and try it because the burgers do look delectable, right? Beautiful place, um, the lake is right there. It's right on the, on the lake over there. So we're gonna go and check it out. Okay guys, so here am I with Derek, right? So yes, the sir. man of the hour, right? So the name of your spot is? Uh, Arrowhead Tavern. By Lake Nojiri. Yes, so yeah, we're up in uh, Lake Nojiri, beautiful okay. like alpine lake uh, in Nagano, Japan. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful this it time is. of year. Look at that. It's a good summer destination. Well, I came at the right time, right? Because I see the, mm. I see the foliage change. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful, man. Yeah. So You're uh, right there, right at the We're right, right on the lake. the lake. Wow. The water is starting to get a little bit cold right now. So okay. we're not seeing as many uh, boats and kayaks, but <laughs> peak summertime, it's filled with kayaks and boats and wakeboarding. Uh, it's a beautiful summer destination. Okay, yeah. can we like go right yeah, to the edge? Yeah, right? let's go, let's go. So we're gonna go to the uh, the restaurant, the tavern, right? And we're gonna try the burgers, the number one burgers in Japan. I saw that on <laughs> Google, right? Google reviews, someone yeah. said it. They, they said it's the best <laughs> burger in Japan. Hey, I mean, we, they look good. Hey, we're, right? we're, so, we're doing a good job. We're doing okay, a good okay. Job. <laughs> right, so where did you get the recipe? Was it from California or you just made something up? I just, uh, I just made it up. Okay. So throughout COVID, you know, I couldn't go home. Mm. I really wanted to go home and Calvin being from Southern California, you know, burgers are just part of our culture, right? So okay. I tried different burger shops in this area, uh, but there just weren't any shops that re resembled a burger like home. So okay, wow. I started making burgers at home, but then I realized that the bread and the, the buns that I could get from the store, they just weren't cutting it. So I started baking my own buns. Wow. And it just turned into this passion project over COVID ah. uh, that just, I guess, turned into a business. And yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's been good. Oh, oh wow. So, so this was like by happenstance. It wasn't like contrived, the, no, the, the no, spot. No, it kind of just grew organically. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay, okay interesting yeah right the place looks beautiful yes uh, the tavern looks beautiful you guys are gonna see it in a second right so we're starting here right and then we're gonna go there and then you're gonna see me sinking my teeth into the number one burger <laughs> in japan right they look good i, I, I gotta you. say right Thank like, you, they look Thank delectable right you. wow so in the summertime yeah you said weightboarding and all that right so now there are people just like so, i guess so these guys chilling. are fishy all, all these boats are fisher boats ah so, okay okay uh, there used to be a, a bridge mm -hmm. of red, one of those like old traditional red bridges. Okay. That went from this pier mm -hmm. all the way. That's an island over there with okay. a shrine on it. Ah, right? okay. And there used to be a bridge. You could just walk over to that shrine. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know how many years ago, but a, a long time ago, uh, almost a hundred years, I believe, yeah. ago, the bridge fell into the lake. Oh, and this lake is 45 meters deep, so it's a it's a deep lake. Wow, okay. really deep lake. Uh, so there's a lot of structure down there for fish mm -hmm. and bass, in, uh, in particular, like structure. Okay. So you can see all the all the fishermen enjoy fishing in this area because of all the structure. Uh, and this area has been famous for bass fishing ever since. Have you gone fishing here before? I mean, I've. I've been fishing. Have I caught a fish? <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. So you, you tried. Okay. I've tried. Okay, you need some lessons, right? Yeah, Ask some of these guys. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. I've never been fishing in my entire life. Okay. It looks fun, but I've never tried. It's fun. So, right. bass fishing is is in this lake is very difficult. Uh, okay. So I go up. Uh, 
there's a mountain over here, Mount mm -hmm. Mioko. Mm -hmm. So there's a river and a waterfall, and I go river fishing there. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to catch fish there with uh, with some oh. help from my friends who know the river. But okay, out cool. here it's very difficult, very wow. difficult. Okay, it's beautiful, right? And yeah. you can't even tell this like very deep from here. You can see like the 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 bottom of it. Yeah. So and then the water. So during uh, autumn, they uh, divert some of the water out to the rice fields. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So normally the water goes up to the banks there. Oh, up, oh okay, yeah. wow, interesting. And then here, usually the water comes up just around, you can kind of see the water level comes up to just about here. Oh, okay, wow, interesting. Yeah. So the water is very low, but then it drops down. There's a shelf that drops down. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And then the island out there has this beautiful shrine on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not a big island, but when you go out to that island, it's just peaceful and quiet. Yeah. So only accessible uh, by boat? Like, only accessible by boat. Okay, okay. So we do uh, kayak tours and we get take people out there oh, to the island. Okay, we have okay. coffee on the island. So next time I'm coming in the, in the summertime, hopefully, yes. fingers crossed, right? And I can check out... Uh, that side. We'll All make right. That happen. Okay, nice. All right, so we're going back to the tavern, yeah. right? Because uh, I'm kind of working up an appetite, right? Um, wow, nice. We're like, yeah. this is beautiful. I'm it's not, beautiful. I, I so we're like surrounded times, by Yeah, we're but, surrounded by mountains. Wow. So that's uh, Kurohime. Oh, this one? Yeah, which means okay. the Black Princess. That's uh, Mount Myoko. Okay, behind this building. Yeah. Is that, this a hotel or something? That is a hotel, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then uh, that's Izuna. Okay, that one that's okay Izuna. and then these mountains over here that's uh shiga kogan okay so winter time this area is amazing for skiing mm. so we're surrounded by ski resorts uh we're surrounded by i believe within about 10 15 minute driving distance about 10 to 12 ski resorts wow and then if you expand that radius out to about 30 minutes you can go to nozawa onsen shiga kogan mm. you can go all over the place skiing and snowboarding so this area right uh during the winter time what happens to this area so the lake it's it's beautiful but uh it's out of season obviously mm -hmm. uh so it does get pretty quiet uh down by the lake but then yeah up here on the ski resorts uh, we're only 10 minutes away from uh, Miyoko, so we get a lot of uh, people coming down. We'll do like a week-long vacation up in Miyoko. They'll mm -hmm. come down and come and check the lake out. In terms of activities, there's not too many activities at the lake during winter time. Okay. Uh, but I am looking to change that uh, and try to get some like, you know, some winter activities down here. Okay. Some snowshoeing and stuff like nice. that. Nice. Because you and your brother are quite inventive, right? You guys come <laughs> up with things, right? You terraform an area. You move in and just change it for the better. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so that's, that's good. That's our goal for out here. Right? Okay. We, uh, you know, I love, I love this area. Uh, I love being able to call this area my home. Yeah. But it's still quite underutilized and underdeveloped. Uh, and what we're doing with the restaurant and with our businesses yeah. and as a community we're really just trying to make this a better place for the next generation mm. uh, for our kids for our friends to come out here and enjoy uh, the nature of Japan mm. yeah so okay. our background is in uh, outdoor tourism mm -hmm. and you know we really want to utilize you know the natural beauty of this area Wow yeah. It's, I've never been to this side before, um, but it's, it's magnificent. Yeah. Thank you. Especially with the foliage change and the yeah. colors. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the, the changing of the leaves is like absolutely beautiful. You know what? Every time I call, there's an onsen inside here. There's yeah, yeah, onsen. yeah. It, It's crazy. Every time I come here, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could live here. You well, know, like, you it, could, it's, you it's quite invited. Very much so. <laughs> and uh, so like the property prices still aren't that, aren't that expensive. Uh, yet <laughs> yet <laughs> so there is uh, major development happening uh, and major investment happening with uh, several of the ski resorts mm -hmm. uh, so we will see this area kind of be put on the map a little bit more uh, moving forward okay and that's you know it's a double-edged sword it's a good thing uh, but we also want to make sure that we maintain you know the sense of community that we've been able to achieve up to this point as i said some of the this area has been kind of 
since the bubble bursted, it's been kind of just left to mm. rot. A okay. lot of the buildings and like the swamp boat, uh, you can't really see it. The swamp boat over Oh, the there, big white one, yeah, right? Okay. It's kind of just falling into <laughs> the lake and okay. just kind of just being left to just rot. And mm. uh, it's a shame because it's beautiful out here, right? The contrast is, is absolutely uh, mm. mind blowing. So you can see, like, with this building behind us, mm -hmm. you know, it's literally falling apart. The, the, oh, the building, yellow one, the yellow building, okay. So, we, um, yeah, we're trying to just revitalize the area, yeah. and make it so when pe tourists come, they have a place where they can feel comfortable where they can come in and, and relax and feel comfortable while enjoying like the beautiful nature of Mojibi. okay so now here we are at we you are. know at the place for the hour yes, right the, the spot so tell us about it before we go inside the exterior right uh so tell us about the name first of all right arrowhead tavern yeah and so, uh just yeah so uh i grew up in uh, i grew up in uh california and uh Growing up, my father and I would always go uh, camping and, and fishing, and uh, we'd go to a lake called Lake Arrowhead in mm. Southern California. And I, since I moved up here, I moved up here with a different project uh, right before the pandemic. But mm. when I moved up here, I decided I would invest in the lake and get a, a house by the lake. It just reminded me so much of, of the memories that I would have with my father. Okay. Uh, you know, this lake is, is, it reminds me so much of Lake Arrowhead. So I just thought, okay, you know, I need a name for the, the business. Why not pay homage to, you know, my father, pay homage to California and create that bridge between, you know, Lake Nojiri and Lake Arrowhead. Wow, nice. Yeah. Okay, okay. And here's the, the logo, right? So this is a lake, right? Arrowhead in California. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's a logo. I got my my friend to design the logo for us. Okay. Uh, and then my friend also painted this. Wow. So this is uh, from a photo that my friend painted, uh, and it's uh, Mount Miyoko, which is uh, the mountain behind us. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's from an actual photo. And the name of the artist is oh. Talisker. Okay, on Instagram, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. So we're gonna go inside and take a look. This is our spot. So we uh, completely, this used to be uh, just like a storage facility. Uh, and my friends and I came in, we tore down the walls. We took, this was just packed full of stuff. We, when you open the door, you couldn't walk in. It took us so long to clear it out. So we did it one K truck by K truck load. And uh, I have some pictures that I can show you guys. And uh, then once we got everything cleared out, we started breaking the walls down. And it turned out this the walls on here were tsuchikabe, which is uh, mud walls. Okay. So the structure is very old and, and the walls were, I don't know how, how old they were, but they were mud walls and they were in great condition still. Uh, and what they did is uh, they would get bamboo and create like a bamboo kind of like rebarb and then pack it with mud and wow. that forms uh, a structure for the wall but it also uh, created insulation for the winter. So we live in one of the snowiest places on earth so insulation is like a big concern. You know? Okay wow so you took that out entirely? Yeah yeah okay. so we took that out entirely and then we went to the local lumber yard and uh, just got kind of recycled wood from them. Uh, they're off cuts and we just put them on the walls and mm. yeah, we're not wow. We're not carpenters uh, it was just So what you you guys did this yourself? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yourselves. Wow. Yeah, we did Like it did not look like this when we got, got in here. Wow, it looks beautiful. Yeah, we did a good wow. job yeah, and I, I, job. I tend to like the woodwork. Mm. I, I like it. I like the look the feel. That's that's the thing, right? So we You know, we're in we're in kind of an outdoor area with the lake, with the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just go with that theme and 
make people feel like they are on vacation yes. in an outdoor location. Yeah. You know, instead of putting drywall and painting it and making this like a modern feeling. Yeah. Like, I wanted to go more rustic. I wanted to go more DIY. Mm. And it's good. It works Thank really, you. really well. Yeah. All right? Thank you. I appreciate that. Also, I want this to be comfortable. So I want people to come in here and relax and spend time here. There's no pressure to like, we're not going to be like, hey, you need to buy something to sit down. Like I, I designed this so people can work remotely so people can use mm. this as their living room as their office wow it's, it's good so when would you invite people to come down like anytime th throughout the year they can just come and visit right whether it winter summer fall yeah. it doesn't matter so yeah when so we're open year round okay i would recommend for in terms of like having a good trip uh all all around trip like a weekend i would recommend coming around uh autumn like this time of year mm. the temperature is perfect the summer season traffic has died down and uh you can really enjoy being outside without being too hot you can really enjoy being outside the uh weather is usually pretty stable and the skies at night the stars are wow. unbelievable okay there's no light pollution up here so you can see all the stars it's it's breathtaking you so may, I ha you may want to stay over now i'm like ah. hey stay man. <laughs> stay. <laughs> <laughs> you know you got a place to stay man you know you got a place to stay so oh, wow. yeah uh and honestly if you do stay the just by looking right now, there's no, there's not a cloud in the sky right now. Yeah. Wow, so the okay. stars tonight are gonna be absolutely wow. incredible. Okay, so we got the. You're paying how much to skateboarding because I know you're a skateboarder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I attempted to do a trick, <laughs> and I think I'm still on the ramp in my mind now from the last time I was there. Yes. I tried. I was like. Hey, you did. Terrified. <laughs> it was terrifying for me to watch, but but you committed and you, you kind of did it. All I right. Did. Uh, so these are taken by uh, a couple of my friends. So okay. uh, this is actually the artist. This is the artist who painted the image in the front. That's Talisker. Okay. Uh, and then these are, this is my friend Mikey. Uh, he does uh, kind of action sports photography. Okay, nice. Back in uh, And that's his work as well? Yep. Oh, that's pretty yep. nice. And then this is actually my brother did this one. Oh, Donald. It's just a koi fish. Oh, it's yeah. pretty cool as well. Yeah, right? so Donald, Donald does he does a lot of stuff, but he's actually a great photographer as well. Oh, nice. And we got the, the guitar. Some Do guitars. you play or? Uh, I, can, I can strum, but I'm not, like, I, I wouldn't play in public. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And what's this? The this table is here. called a shuffleboard. A shuffleboard. So it's like a Olympic curling. On, it's like ah, table curling. Okay. So... This is, uh, this powder is called, uh, it's silicone, right? Okay. So, here, we can even it out. Show me a little bit. Yeah. So we wax it. Interesting. Yeah. So when I saw it, I thought about a pool table. I'm like, wait, mm, it's something different. Like, what exactly is it? Yeah, but, uh, so. Let me... Okay, I'm gonna learn something new today. Something Hi. safer than skateboarding. Oh, hello. hello. How you doing? Good. Has the great thing to live yet? Yeah. Hello. Uh, Melissa. <laughs> Interesting. So we put that on. Nice, even layer. So without the wax, it doesn't really slide that much. Right? Okay. But on the wax, it slides for days. Oh, I see, I see. It's fine, it's a good bar game. Okay. You have red pucks and blue pucks. And then uh, you start from one side, two people start from one side, mm -hmm. and then you just shoot against each other. Okay. So the furthest puck, the person with the furthest puck wins. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. What if it falls off? Is that like a... Then no points for that. No point, okay. Uh, if it's off of the edge, then it's four points. Okay. Yeah. You got a DJ booth here as well? Yeah, we get we have music going. We just finished some renovations, so uh, uh, there's uh, there's some renovation stuff here. But yeah, we have uh, music every once in a while. I wish we could get more music going more often. That's one of my goals for okay. this coming uh, year. 
uh, like open mics or yeah I mean there's not much of a uh, talent pool mm. in this area okay so yeah I'm, I'm making it a mission to uh, check out Nagano a little bit more Nagano City it's only 20 minutes away okay. from here mm. and uh, see there, there has to be some talent out there that could, definitely yeah is there anything any unique thing here you want to tell me about uh, in this section <laughs> all right we have a who, well, just, the decor work was it like your idea completely like just yeah. with the layout yeah so okay okay yeah again we just wanted and to the, make it comfortable uh so wood and metal is kind of stuff uh stuff that i like uh yeah plants i love okay. house plants make it feel homey okay but yeah the idea is to make people just come sit down relax read a book and just chill out nice spend time here all right, and we got the flag, the California flag. Yes, is that? Yes, okay, sir. okay. They got a lot of bears in Cali, or? Uh, there's black bears in, in California. That's a grizzly bear, uh, okay. a brown bear. Uh, we don't have those anymore, but we do have black bears out in the mountains. Okay, interesting. We have bears out here, though. Here? Yeah, in this area. Really? So be yeah. <laughs> so, wait, wait, when I'm walking to the car, I gotta like, look out not, for bears? Not, not, oh. down, not <laughs> in the neighborhood, but... Up at my house, we have we have bears come up every once in wow. a while. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So, so if you guys don't see the video, you know what happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So we got this like a little couch here, and this oh oh this um rotates or yeah yeah. Sofa's kind of. Reading uh, corner. Okay. You got a library? The books? No. Uh no, we used to, but then people started dropping off random books and. Yeah, we, we got some weird stuff in, oh. in there, so I took the library out. Uh, we had like maternity journals and just some weird stuff. Okay, in there, okay. So, yeah, we took the we took the library out. All right, so maybe some magazines. And, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so this is the menu. Yes. Right. Our menu. So we do American style breakfast. Uh, uh, we do pancakes, uh, bacon, eggs. Our bacon is home cured, home smoked. Uh, just so we get that authentic American bacon flavor. Wow. Uh, and then we also do a breakfast burrito, mm -hmm. uh, which is large uh, flour tortilla with uh, eggs and guacamole, beans, and uh, bacon. Okay, well, what's, what's this? What's this here? It looks good. That's, so the air, that's an arrowhead pancake. So the pancake. Oh, no, the drink. The drink. Oh, the drink? Yeah. That's, a, uh, that's an iced latte. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Then, uh, yeah, so we're known for our burgers. Uh, we have our Picante Smash Burger, which is our uh, uh, the season's featured burger. Uh, it has like a homemade sour cream, uh, pico de gallo, and uh, which is like salsa, uh, and a chipotle adobo. Uh, that adds like this nice smoky uh, heat to, to the burger. And then we have our Arrowhead Smash Burger, which is uh, which is our standard burger. That's that's the burger that got us started. So that's uh, our most popular burger. Wow. Um, and then we do carnitas. <laughs> can't, can't wait, can't wait. <laughs> uh, we do carnitas burritos. Uh, we also do a barbecue pulled pork sandwich uh, with homemade barbecue sauce. Okay. And we do tacos, quesadillas, chicken wings. Yeah. Chicken wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I don't know, guys. I might have to stay over tonight. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna happen, man. And then, uh, yeah, we have uh, cocktails as well. So, uh, uh, like, I love cocktails. I love making cocktails. So we have a whole range of cocktails as well. Okay, which one is the most popular one there? Most popular is the the margarita. The, okay, the margarita. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> right. So, customers know what's best, right? So, yes. So uh, the the margarita, uh, the espresso martini is pretty popular. We use uh, we have great quality coffee beans, Ethiopian coffee beans. Oh, so and, that's uh, it. Right, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So we do a fresh shot of uh, of espresso in our espresso margarita and make our martini, and it makes a really good one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what am I gonna be trying today? Like, what should I try? Let's do, uh, alright, let's do a double okay. classic burger. Alright. Alright, with some Cajun fries. And mm. what kind of drink do you want? A nice latte? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, let's do, do that. that. Okay. We As just finished the rush. It, it might be, it's messy. We just. It looks good. So use this. Um... So, yeah, we, uh, we make our bread fresh daily. 
please forgive the uh, the mess. We just finished a big uh, uh, lunch rush. But yeah, we uh, do the bread fresh uh, daily. And uh, that's one of the main reasons as to why I think our burgers are, uh, are taste so good. Okay, so the secret is the bread. Yes, fresh bread, you can't beat it. We saw over there. Looks good. Is that egg like egg? Is that egg it's sauce? Egg wash. It's egg, egg wash. Oh, okay. So okay. it gives it a nice brown color after we. So that's sesame, sesame seeds on top. Okay. The burger is actually, you know, the bread and everything that we use is all natural ingredients. kind of basic cooking theory is you want to balance flavors right so with like pickles they add a nice acidity they also add uh, texture okay to it not just with burgers to whatever you want to put them in okay. uh, same with different types of vegetables have different types of uh, qualities that add to the general flavor of whatever you're doing so, I need, okay I need to ask you like so what got you interested in food because it seems like you're like a pro there uh yeah, I mean I studied uh, school, culinary arts oh. after high school. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I've always since I was like a teenager, I always like enjoyed cooking. I don't ah, okay. <laughs> just having fun with it. Nice. Uh, so natural progression is the uh, the tavern. Yeah, okay. and I just I love eating. That's the big thing. I love eating good food. So I love replicating what I've eaten in in restaurants at home. Okay, nice. So, uh, yeah, these bread, uh, buns fresh from the oven. We'll just grab one of these. Go, knife. Yeah, they're nice and soft buns. Go, we'll put this on here. So we're gonna get this uh, pan really hot, like screaming hot. And what we do, what makes a, our type of burger different than like a normal pub style burger we do smash burgers so we have a meatball uh, 85 gram meatball and we get the temperature really hot on the flat grill and then we put the meatball on the flat grill directly and then we smash it down right and what we do when we smash it down is we create caramelization from the high heat and the pressure of smashing it down, we create something called a Maillard uh, reaction, which develops different flavors and there's chemical reactions that go on from the high heat and the meat and the fats in the meat. So our meat that we use is 100% uh, ground beef, about 20% fat, 80% uh, lean, and what that allows is a nice clean caramelization on the bottom side okay. and then we just do salt and pepper uh, that's all we need to flavor the meat because the meat that we use is like really good quality from a lo local butcher we don't have to put any other ingredients like oregano or garlic into our meat wow. I want people to taste the, the that's meat. good that's good yeah it's nice to hear someone talking about cooking that understands the you know the the, the art of it right yeah. the science behind <laughs> it actually Very yeah. interesting I mean it's there's a lot that goes into it, but uh, for me, it's mostly just, I just enjoy creating mm. with food. And one of the, one of my biggest pleasures in life is when I create something and I see some, like I give it to somebody and I see their reaction, right? Yeah. And uh, with the burgers, every time it's somebody's first time coming in, they come in, they get the burger and almost everybody has the same reaction which is just they they nod their heads they <laughs> right and sitting from here i can look out and 
you know, I can see that reaction from the kitchen. Just it validates what we're doing here. Nice. Yeah. Our buns are toasted. All right, so we'll just put these here. And I'm going to let this go. You can see that the uh, pan is starting to kind of smoke a little bit. I'm going to let that get a little bit hotter, more hot, so we can uh, get our meat on that. But uh, before that, get our plate. This is our burger sauce, our kind of homemade secret burger sauce. Uh, some pickles. And then a good amount of onions on top. Pickles. Cool. Maybe a little bit more. We get the fries going. So we have our meatballs, 85 grams each. So we'll just put these on directly on here. And then just press down. And smear it up. Just like that. I'll do the same thing here. Press down. Yeah. And clear it up. From here, all we do, this is just salt and pepper. So, just a little bit, not too much. Again, we use great quality meat. And then since we smash them down, we don't actually have to cook them for too long, mm -hmm. right? It's okay. about a minute, maybe a minute and 30 seconds on one side. Right. Mm -hmm. right, I'm so glad, glad I caught that. <laughs> Take our ketchup. local uh, tomatoes that we get from a local farmer around here and then we get our burger sauce okay. like Take our fries. so we do uh, just salt a little bit of salt Cajun. This is our homemade uh, Cajun blend. A little bit of sugar to balance off the uh, salt, right? Now, with the fries, I want people to enjoy the fries, right? So that's why we do the Cajun fries. Uh, it's not spicy, uh, it's a little bit sweet, uh, a little bit salty, uh, but it's well balanced. It has paprika, oregano, garlic, white pepper in it. So with the fries, I want to make that match the burger, right? Mm, nice. And then this, we just, uh, this is mostly for aesthetics. 
looks so good. All right. We take our Cajun. This is just for aesthetics. So that's it, right? That's it. Beautiful. Just that. There we go. And where do we want it? Wow. There it is. So with our coffee, uh, I started off, we were roasting our own uh, coffee beans uh, here, but then our demand just grew. So now we work with a coffee roaster in Nagano City. Okay. And, uh, they meet our demands. This is a G4 Shiramoka Ethiopian coffee bean. Okay. Ethiopian coffee beans typically have a uh, blueberry undernote to it, blueberry Ooh. and chocolate to it. So coffee comes from, like I said, a, um, a tree that produces a fruit that looks like a cherry or a mm. berry, mm. right? So when you process coffee, there's different ways to process coffee, but when you get into like really good coffee and roasting coffee, you can taste the nuance and the flavor of that variety of coffee mm -hmm. cherry, of that variety of coffee bean, right? So different regions of coffee have different flavor profiles. I see. Ethiopia typically has like a blueberry uh, flavor to it. Interesting. So uh, we, here we do all of our coffee is measured out to order. So we do 20 grams of coffee grounds to 40 grams of espresso. You said ice latte? Yes. yes. Okay. Nice and creamy espresso. And we'll put that on top. Let's put a quick fryer. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Wait, close up. Can you get a good shot? Can you see it? There you go. It looks good? That looks good. Okay, all right, here we go. Mm. Mm, okay. mm -hmm. The pickles, the, the 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 patty, the buns, a match made in heaven, bro. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, it's Ranzo approved. Ranzo approved, okay? Wow. Bro, I love it like how um well done the sides are, mm. how crispy it is. You spoke about the texture of the pickles, right? Yeah. The texture as well. It's really, really good. I recommend it 100 percent Wow. Oh. Sorry, I'm licking my fingers. Forgive me. It's good. And it's really good, bro. Thank you, thank you. Wow. So, with the yeah, the buns are nice and soft, really mm. soft, right? Yeah. But then the texture as well of the patty, right? That adds texture. It's not mm. just like on a normal pub burger. Mm. It's it doesn't have texture like the patty. Is. If you just think about like if you go to like a, a yeah, pub, it's kind of like just dry and it's thicker mm. and more like a. Are you that much? Yeah. Oh, you want to come on this side and talk? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, since the, the 
the buns are nice and soft, right? The patty, the caramelization on the patty mm -hmm. adds that texture, right? True, true. With the onions and the pickles as well, mm -hmm. it gives it that crunch. So wow. there's something called mouth fatigue. So if you are eating something that doesn't have texture, or maybe it has a little bit too much texture, mm -hmm. then your your body gets a little bit uh, tired after eating it. Your mouth gets a little bit tired. After I know what you mean. Mm. Wow. Bro, it's good. Yeah, it's I might leave here with a, an extra. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I might get another one for the road. <laughs> of course, of course. So it's Ranger proof. I knew it was good. <laughs> I knew it was, right? So, right? I wanted to try it for myself. I appreciate that. Wow. So again, guys, we are in Nagano, right? At Arrowhead Tavern. When you come, as usual, tell them that Ranzo sent you, okay? And this is a classical, right? The classic. That's a classic burger. Double. We have other types of burgers. Uh, yeah, we have the spicy burger, wow. uh, jalapeno bacon burger. And you guys hear his knowledge, right? So you know that he, he doesn't play when it comes to the food, <laughs> right? He knows the science, right? It's an art and science. So if you come here, I'm sure you're in good hands. Yeah, oh. I never knew we're so in depth with like food, right? Just you're talking mm. about the whole thing. I'm like, okay, all right, it's like, come Mr. Castle or something. I'm like, all right, all right, okay. <laughs> I'm taking notes. Cool, cool. Wow, let me try the fries here. Also, if you come and you say that Renzo, Ranzo sent you, mm. then you get a 10% discount. Oh, look at that. Right. Look at that. Wow. Take care people of the community. Come. Take people care of the come. community. People will come 100%. 100%, 100 sure. they will come. For sure. Wow. The food was really, really good, right? So I hope there's no food in my face. No, you're good. Because good, good, right? I was digging in. Right, so I want to ask Derek, right, about his black experience in Japan. Before even that, like your journey to this place, right, you came yeah. to Japan, like why Japan? And just tell me about your journey, right? Okay, so I came to Japan, uh, I believe in 2015. Uh, went to university at Temple University in Tokyo. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you were in Tokyo then? Yeah, yeah, I was in Tokyo for several years. Oh, okay. uh, went to Temple University. My brother went there, uh, hmm. so that was kind of my into japan ah oh, okay, okay i came out visited him while he was at university uh just came out on vacation mm -hmm. and absolutely loved it loved okay. the people loved the food loved the culture uh and with that just you know I, I was in community college at the time and in america in america okay and just decided at when i came back from community college literally the next day was the beginning of the semester wow and i just went into a japanese class and, and mm -hmm. signed up for it so mm -hmm. uh so what was it about japan that sort of like uh just pulled you in it was so foreign to any other place that i've been to okay. same thing for me yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was you know i i got lost a couple of times and mm -hmm. it was terrifying no mm -hmm. like if something happens and Mo like European countries or South American countries, if you say police or policia, you can get the, yeah. the cops, right? Right? But out here, it's case ups, right? Yeah, and it's if you don't know that, yeah. you know, like stuff like that, or, or just getting lost in Tokyo, mm. it's exciting, right? There's always something going on. Mm. There's people, there's things to do, there's amazing food. And um, back in Los Angeles, I had a, a lot of uh, Japanese friends from the college that I was at. Okay. So they introduced me to their friends when I came to Japan the first time. Mm. And, uh, 2015? 2015. Mm. And from there, I just I had a foundation to call home. I had mm. friends. I had my brother out here. So the transition or the decision to come out here was quite easy for me okay yeah. so you came for a school initially yes sir in 2015 yes sir right in tokyo so you spent uh maybe what three years four years in tokyo uh so shoot yeah i must have spent four years yeah 2019 so four years in tokyo okay okay cool yeah. so why uh where we we're in uh, nagano right mm. so it's very different from tokyo so yeah. why the transition because your brother was here was that what was the reason you moved actually no uh that was just coincidence uh but no i came up uh for a project mm -hmm. uh to it was like a redevelopment project for one of the ski resorts okay that brought me up here uh conveniently donald was living in this area so okay. it made that move and in, in saying yes to that project uh much easier uh but that was before the pandemic 
Uh, so I came up here in the pandemic, you know, the world shut down. Yeah. And uh, prior to that, I bought a house at the lake. Mm. And just throughout the pandemic, just decided I wanted to invest in myself and, you know, start. I've always wanted to open up a cafe, a restaurant. Mm. Um, this actually started off as a coffee roasting project. Okay. So I wanted to roast coffee and sell coffee. But, uh, I don't know, the opportunity just presented itself with mm. this lake, with the timing. Um, I was able to develop things kind of in a vacuum, mm. uh, in a controlled setting mm -hmm. with the pandemic. Okay. Right? Mm. And once restrictions got looser, then we were able to, you know, focus on the brick and mortar um, and open this restaurant. So when did you guys open? 2022 in uh, August. Okay. But before that, uh, to kind of prove the concept, mm -hmm. I built this uh, food truck. Oh, really? So I built a food truck and like all of this, everything that we have here, yeah. I literally like funded everything by selling burgers from the food truck. Wow. That's like, a good way to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's what proved to me. It was like, all right, I am committed to this project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. So... Uh, and then with the development of the recipes and testing out different, you know, flavor profiles, I decided, you know, I'm going to continue moving forward and wow. got good feedback from it. Okay. So, so when you first uh, came to Japan in 2015, did you see this at all? No, the, no, absolutely not. <laughs> so what trajectory did you have in your mind? Like, where did you see yourself going? Like you went to school here. Yeah. You're like, okay, am I going to live in Japan or go back to Los Angeles? What were you thinking at that time? Man, what was I thinking? I don't know. I was in a bit of a like mental funk, okay. and uh, this must have been two thousand, yeah, two thousand nineteen, spring of two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. I was just in this mental funk. I was in between jobs. Uh, I just, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't know. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't even get like English teaching jobs. I was mm. blind for everything. Because it was here, this area. Or? No, no, no. This is before I moved up here. Okay, okay. Uh, this was in Tokyo, and okay. I was just in this weird area. I, I could, I didn't know what, like, the future held for me, right? Mm. And uh, I was just in this funk. So I just kept thinking, okay, I'll just do my own thing. I'll just do my own thing. Uh, you know, I researched small business loans in in Japan and came up with a bunch of different business plans. And uh, since I skateboard and I'm connected with the skate culture in Tokyo, uh, I just thought of combining my passion for cooking and my passion for skateboarding mm -hmm. and creating, this is where the food truck came in, creating okay. a, a food truck that had a skate ramp, like a half pipe, a mini ramp. Okay, on the back of it. On the back of oh, it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then we could pull up to events or yeah. we can have our own events yeah. and wow. just kind of create our own event space yeah. with a full bar, a full, uh, you know, kitchen wow. and entertainment through yeah. music and through, through skating. That time in what, 2019 when we were in that, you know, you couldn't really uh, land a job or figure yeah. it out. If someone is in that place right now watching, yeah. any advice that you could share for that person? Yeah. Be patient. That's, that's the biggest thing. Be patient. Focus on yourself, but focus on taking steps one day at a time, mm. one hour at a time, right? Mm. You know, when you wake up, if things feel stagnant, like where I was, things just felt stagnant, mm. right? Then I started focusing on improving myself through journaling, through sitting down, like literally waking up, writing down in the journal, today I'm going to do this, 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 and this and executing on those, mm. right? I couldn't find a job for whatever reason. Mm. I applied to a bunch of jobs, I couldn't find a job. Mm. And that was frustrating. But it also, at the same time, I couldn't do much more than what I was doing. Okay. I knew I was doing what I had to be doing in terms of searching for the job, mm. but I couldn't land a job. So mm. I thought, okay, instead of being frustrated and asking why and all that. I just thought, okay, let me put in the time to send applications out to different uh, jobs. But then after that, 
spend the rest of the day being productive, being healthy. So I started eating healthy. I started going into the gym. I started mm. focusing on just the smaller things, mm. you know, the day-to-day things, waking up and, like, I wrote down in my journal, do 15 push-ups. Mm. You can do that. Anybody can do that, mm. right? It might be hard for some people, but yeah. you can get up, do 15 push-ups, mm. right? You can get up and drink two liters of water. Mm. Small stuff like that adds up. Mm. And if you hold yourself accountable for drinking two liters of water in the morning, right? Mm. Two liters of water is a lot of water. Right? It is. But if you can do something simple like that and finish two liters of water and give yourself that check in your journal and do the next step, that challenge is done. How, how did you like bring the two things that you were, you were good at? Well, two of the things you, you were good at, right? Uh, skateboarding and also food together. Like, when did that moment happen? I don't know. I've been, I've been fortunate in life to work in in the industry, the ski and snowboard industry and mm-hmm. outdoor industry. I've been fortunate since I've been in Japan, since day one. Mm-hmm. I literally landed in Japan, uh, checked into my apartment, and then went up and went snowboarding with, okay. my, comp- with my job at the time. Mm-hmm. So I've been fortunate enough to live a lifestyle and understand that you can ha- get paid having fun, mm-hmm. like doing what you like doing, mm-hmm. right? And just like with my friends growing up and the people that I've been surrounded with, by growing up I've been fortunate enough to be in a circle of people who have pursued their dreams Mm. right who and I've seen the struggles with it as well it's not gonna be easy it's gonna suck but you can have fun doing what you want to do right now it if you want to be the best skateboarder in the world yeah that's gonna be difficult there's competition there's a lot that goes on with that right Mm. but Say if you, it, with skateboarding or snowboarding, if you want to get paid skiing or snowboarding, if you want to get paid skateboarding, mm. you can teach lessons. You can go on, I don't know, uh, Facebook or Instagram and say, hey, I teach skateboard lessons mm. for True. 15 bucks an hour. Mm. You can do that. Are you going to be rich doing it? Not initially. Mm. But if you invest that money back into yourself, then... Yeah. You can create your own skateboard. You can create your own brand, right? What about like uh, a little segue um, into your black experience in Japan? Like, what has that been like for you over the last what, eight years? So, through university, I was able to be surrounded by uh, you know brothers and sisters, and mm. have that community. Mm. Having my brother out here as well mm. has given me that sense of community. But it's not always easy. Um, you know, and most of my friends are Japanese or, or, you know, from America, from Europe, from Australia. Um, and it gets lonely sometimes, right? It definitely gets lonely uh, because people don't understand. I can't... Oh, I see. Okay, being like a black I, person. Yeah, yeah I oh, can't okay. always mm. be myself, mm. right? I can't okay. always talk the way that I normally talk, right? Mm, I have to sometimes put on a facade mm. to get through. A code switching type thing? Code or? switching, yeah. Okay. And uh, then from, like, with some of my Japanese associates, their only expo- exposure to black people is through media, mm, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. not a good representation, representation yeah. right? <laughs> So, people ask me stupid questions, mm. and so sometimes you just have to suck it up yeah. <laughs> and uh, mm. laugh it off, and you know. But I try my best to be a good representative, and I try my best to just let people understand that it's not what, what you see think? in the media is not like yeah. you know. <laughs> not there's, there's black lawyers and doctors, and yeah, presidents, oh, wow. and, right. Yeah. I think the the negative representation is the more prevalent, right? Okay. And uh, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating because wow. So I have yeah. So what's like an like maybe an encounter, maybe a scenario or something that you've experienced that you can maybe detail uh, in terms of like how they had a certain perception and then you kind of dispel that. Mm. Do, you, do you have like a story or a recollection of something, or what happens when you tell them that okay, this is not the case? And uh, what's the response like after that? I, I can't think of one specific uh, moment. I'm sure if I if I thought about this, I could have 
yeah come up with something but uh actually recently uh so i do uh show pulled on i'm part of the uh volunteer fire uh, oh. reserves out here nice uh which side note if you're coming to japan and you you live in japan i highly recommend to anybody volunteer for your fire department uh it is a great way to give back to your community but also be connected with your community wow uh it's like around here it's vital we respond to fires we do first aid we we are very essential to the integrity of this neighborhood and uh, to my town that's big i've never heard that before so what about the language um proficiency in order to become a volunteer successfully like how does that work um i mean you definitely would need some some japanese mm. you definitely would need some japanese but at least with my uh with my team and my station, they're very, they're very welcoming, right? Especially when it comes, like I, I speak Japanese conversationally. Uh, I, my Japanese isn't all that bad, but it's not when it comes to specifics with first aid, with with uh, the specifics and nuances of, of like our, our fire brigade. So it uh, it is, yeah. There's words and and stuff that i just yeah the vocabulary yeah. Like, techni <laughs> like technical ten some technical terms and stuff like yeah, that yeah yeah okay. that's uh, interesting how has that been like that's been good but back to the original question mm. coming back from the states mm. you know they asked me if like i'm part of a gang if i'm a gang <laughs> member if i own and shoot guns if i you know they, mm. they asked me stuff like that yeah. where it's like would you be asking your other foreign friends that question mm. right mm. no mm. right they asked wow. if my dad's a if my dad's a gangster I said no my dad's not a gangster stuff like that where yeah. you wouldn't i don't think that's a normal line of questioning mm. right and they say it kind of in a joking way but they're probably serious <laughs> they're, they're probably, serious yeah right they laugh about it but they're serious right mm. wow. and my concern is i have two boys now my wife is japanese I have two boys, and growing up, how are they going to be treated? Right? That's my biggest concern. Yeah. So, do you think Tokyo is a, a better place, or here is a better place in, in terms of raising a uh, multicultural, multiracial family? Mm. What do you think? I'd say probably Tokyo would be a better location mm. for multicultural families. Although in our specific neighborhood, in our specific area, there are a lot of like multicultural uh, families. And mm. Thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, there are a lot of multicultural families. There's a lot of, um, there's a history of foreigners in my area. So mm. we're, we're in the sticks, like mm. this is a country, mm. right? I drove a while to get here. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're it's beautiful, the, though. Beautiful, beautiful. It's place. absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, we're, we're in the country, and there is a wall up with the foreigners oh, and see. the Japanese. The yeah. Japanese here, they're not welcoming. Really? They're not welcoming. Wow. I mean, but if, to put that into perspective, where we are here is if you were to drive... Mm -hmm. to the middle of America, right? Oh, I see. And okay. start a, I don't know, if a Japanese person, if a Japanese person were to drive into the middle of America and start a sushi restaurant, mm -hmm. it depends on where you go, but there's a lot of ignorance. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lack of exposure to mm -hmm. foreigners, to mm -hmm. different cultures, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just where we are right now. Okay. Will we be here in 15, 20 years? I don't think so. I, I do see a bright future for where we are. Mm. But right now, we're it's very underdeveloped. And the current uh, populace is quite... They're older, they're ignorant, they're not exposed mm. to other people. So is there anything that maybe you have championed, maybe in terms of trying to dispel some of the preconception or the... Anything, I don't know, like, is there anything that you try to do, maybe, like, or are you just like, okay, they're kind of send off it, you just let them be where they are, and you just do your thing, or? I mean, the fire brigade, being okay, part of the, okay, that, okay, that, that was one of good. the, the main reason why I joined that was because I wanted to be a part of the community. Wow. And I wanted to show people, I'm living here year-round, 
I'm not I'm not a bad guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not a thug. I'm not some guy that that you need to worry about. I'm, yeah. And what better way to prove that than responding to emergencies and helping the community? And I think that was one of the best things that I could have done. Mm. Uh, yet we still, I still run into problems. Uh, like with the shop here, like they have made it very clear. Some people do not want me. I've been told to go back to my own country. Mm. I've been uh, like when I there's when we take the garbage out when we first open up. They would literally take the garbage from the uh, garbage center or like the area, the drop off, mm. and bring it back and put it in the front of the door. So when I come to to work, mm. I have garbage in the front of my door. Mm. So I'd have to take it up to my house and throw it up there. Wow. There's stuff like that that I didn't expect to experience in 2022, 2023. Mm. You know, and part of my frustration is my my parents fought in the civil rights Mm. right they put their lives on the line to make a better future for us right Mm. and i know we're in japan i know we're in a different place but i have a dilemma now where Mm. how how am i supposed to change the their perspective on foreigners Mm. or do i just mind my business mm. keep doing what i'm doing maintain my integrity mm. all right but i am nervous about the future in this area and other areas like this in japan for foreigners for mixed race families for my kids to go to school out here wow because mm. are they going to get bullied right just for mm. being half right which mm. is a terrible term right or different yeah right? mm. so those are concerns of mine my kids are still young so you know we we have some room to establish ourselves in the community here mm. before they're mm. old old enough to go into the school wow well that's that's a bit uh, a bit heavy stuff yeah, um, so how do you how do you like mentally like navigate that right in <laughs> terms of like when just like the story you just recollected uh, you know the garbage thing like how do you like mentally deal with that uh i mean i wish i could sit here and say i'm a saint and i've mm. meditated the stress I, sometimes i you know i lose it mm. right uh sometimes like i've cried i've gone home frustrated and <laughs> i've been to my wife i've been to my staff fortunately i have amazing staff and friends Mm -hmm. and my wife and community where they have been able to be my advocates Mm -hmm. and they like especially uh uh michael one of one of the managers here Mm -hmm. she she stands up for us Mm -hmm. because what we're doing here we're benefiting this community yeah, we're creating jobs yeah. and spending tax money and creating programs. Yeah. We intend on doing like English. Yeah, improving programs, the place. Improving the place. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm fortunate enough to have a network and a community of people who they understand it. Mm-hmm. And some of the people from this town, they they see what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. But there's there's a decent amount of people who mm-hmm. just whatever we do. If we gave this town a million bucks, they still wouldn't like it. <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily a, a... I don't think they would treat me differently if I was, say, white or a different type of Asian or Indian or whatever. So foreigners, I think it's a foreign... Okay. A fear of foreigners. Mm. Because I've seen in this area, I've seen people do amazing programs, educational programs for kids, yeah. uh, development programs. For this area i've seen a lot of that and i've also seen them get treated the same way so i can't i'm not saying it's necessarily a, a a black thing or a racial thing on me but i think it's more yeah a fear of foreigners and a fear of development and a change of the status quo right? mm, i see oh, okay I see a lot of people aren't giving to change keep going keep doing what you're doing but of course you know just whatever your vision is for your life and your family you know just champion that and uh yeah, it's a good thing, right? So that's it's the thing. thing. When you look at what you're doing, is it good or bad? It's good. We are doing a good job, and, and the other people that I'm referencing or, or 
doing development programs in this area. Mm. We're doing a great job. And yeah. that's why the eyes are on us, right? Mm. If we weren't doing as good of a job, I don't think there would be as much pushback to what we're doing, mm. right? So we're mm. we're doing great things around here, educational mm. programs and activity programs, uh, multicultural programs, mm. right? We're doing a great job. Uh, so that's encouraging, yeah. right? And while there is negativity, there's always going to be negativity, mm. right? There's always, regardless of what we do, there's mm. going to be something, right? So, mm. so which one is? Uh, do you think negative outweighs a positive, or you, you have more positive energy coming your way than the? What do you think? The, you the positive outweighs the negative for sure. Okay. So we live in one of the snowiest places on earth, mm. right? Statistically, fact, one of the snowiest places on earth. Mm. What, two years ago, two seasons ago, we had one of the heaviest snowfalls on like recorded history in this wow. area. Wow, okay. Uh, and there was one day, this one storm hit, maybe three or four days storm. Mm -hmm. And the day that it cleared up, we drove around and there were buildings that just imploded from wow. the snow, mm. right? Just from that one storm. Mm. If you drive around town, mm. you'll just see buildings that have been collapsed and have collapsed. Like state of emergency was declared. It, it was it was a disaster. It was complete devastation. Mm. Right? This specific building that we're in, if I didn't clear snow during that storm, mm. then this building 100% would have collapsed. Right? Oh, wow. Okay. And the problem is with some of these buildings, they don't know who owns the building, oh, right? Mm -hmm. There's disputes between the family who owns the, the, the rights to the building. So mm -hmm. these buildings will just sit there for the rest of eternity, right? Yeah. And just sit there and nobody's gonna clean them up. And mm -hmm. it's happening, it's way more of an issue in this area than people realize. When okay. you drive around, you're, you're going to see buildings that have just completely collapsed and they're okay. going to sit collapsed, mm -hmm. right? Wow. So we need, if I wasn't here, this building wouldn't be here. I know with some of the other newer uh, buildings and restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, it's the same case, mm -hmm. right? And there's okay. a lot of Japanese people from Tokyo, from Osaka coming up and, and doing projects in this area as, as well. Mm -hmm. So. You know, the, the positive in the community definitely outweighs the negative. And what we're able to achieve and what we have been able to achieve so far, it's very encouraging. Mm. Yeah. So any advice for people who, uh, I guess, might have a similar vision or they're somewhere in Japan and they might be uh, experiencing pushback? Like just mm. any advice for them, like, from just what you've gleaned so far being here? Be confident in yourself, mm. right? Be confident with who you are, who your people are, mm -hmm. uh, and know your history. Know, know who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, I think, the most important. And that's not just in Japan. That's wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Just be confident with who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Give yourself compliments. Treat yourself right. Eat, eat good food. Right. Mm -hmm. Drink water. Right. If you're confident with yourself, when people hit you with negativity. Right, you already have that foundation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then, say if if somebody's trying to develop their own business or or uh, you know go start their own project, mm -hmm. do it, start it. Yeah, come up with the plan, come up with the business plan, make sure the numbers work. Start small and scale it up, right? Like I said here, I, I funded all of this through selling burgers on the side of the road, mm. one burger at a time, mm. right? And I would take mm. the money from that one day, I would buy and reinvest in the materials for the next day and just kept doing that. Doing that. Yeah. And I, I funded all of this through mm. selling burgers on the side of the road. What I love about Japan is there's yeah. a lot of opportunities to follow your dreams. Mm, indeed. indeed. Right? Yeah. And the initial startup costs, it depends on what your project is, but yeah. the initial startup costs really, you can, it, it's going to take some hard work mm -hmm. and it's not going to be easy, but 
I feel like in Japan you can do anything. Yeah. You can reach a, a you can reach your market through social media. Mm. I think at higher numbers out here because the population is more directed in specific mm. areas. Tokyo, right? We, we're close to Nagano, so we do all of our marketing to Nagano mm. and Joetsu, right? I, I would just say to anybody, just be confident in yourself, make sure that the numbers work, mm. and just go for it. Have some fun with it. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. good. Amen, amen. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so I want you to tell people um, where they can find you online, mm. Right, the address for the place, and y'all gotta come and try the burgers. One hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent. Again, ten percent off if you tell them that Ranzo sent you. Right, so uh, yeah, so shoot, you know, tell them uh, where to find you guys. Cool. So, so uh, you can find us at uh, on Instagram Arrowhead No GD uh, at Arrowhead No GD. Uh, that's where we have most of our, our uh, engagement is on uh, Instagram, okay. uh, Facebook as well. Uh, Arrowhead No GD. Uh, we're still working on this. Donald, we're still working oh. on the uh, on the website, so Donald's okay. helping me out on the website. Okay. So I don't know when that's gonna launch. He's busy, but okay. What about the address? Two five seven dash five no GD Shinano Machi Nagano uh, Japan. I'll put the address on the screen. You guys can see it, and then cool. check the description as well to find the address for this place. Derek, again, thank you so much for your time. Okay. The burger was fire, thank right? You. Like um, it, it was, it was fire. Right, so I, I, I think I'm going to take one home. I don't know, maybe not. It's probably a little bit too late. Oh, all uh, good. But I really appreciated it, right? I so again, you. guys, this was Derek and this is Arrowhead Tavern, right? Make sure you come again and tell them that Ranzo sent you for 10% off. Until next time, if you like the video, please thumbs up, right? And uh, subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Peace.